Hey there, Tech Enthusiast, welcome back to Prime Coding. I am Aditya and in this video, we'll solve SNCHA September 5 online assessment coding problems. And before moving to it, there's a small request. You can share your coding questions and interview experience, let it be of any company, to us through Telegram, WhatsApp, Instagram, email, or LinkedIn. Okay, you can reach out to us. In the description, you can find all the social links which will help you to reach out to us. So one of the member who recently reached out to us regarding the Essential OA experience and he shared all the OA2 problems, both of the problems. So we'll discuss each one of them. And the Essential playlist was very helpful for him and I recommend you as well because that playlist contains coding sheet and their solutions as well. From that sheet, you can find a similar or the same questions. In this OA as well, you can find the same question present in our sheet as well. So do check it out. Now, Problem statement. You are given a decimal number n. Okay, I, I got it. Your task is to convert it to binary and return the sum of its digit. Okay, so the decimal number is 10 and the binary equivalent of this 10 would be 1010. Okay, so the sum of digits is 2. So we need to return 2 as we can see the output. This question is pretty simple, is it? So now what would be the code of this or what would be the logic behind this program. So if you know or you might have studied in your electronics or computer organization where you need to find the binary equivalent of a decimal number. Okay, so how you usually find it. So okay, let's say I need to convert to 10. So 2 times 2 times 5 give you 10. So that uh, remainder would be 0. 2 times 2 would be 4. Remainder would be 1 because 5 minus 4 is 1. And 2 times 1 is 2 which will give you Zero. So it is 1010. So 1010 is a binary equivalent of this 10. Okay, so how we found? So as I can see the pattern whenever I, I was converting it is we need to divide anything, any we need to divide the decimal number by 2 and the quotient, whatever quotient we got, we need to replace it or we need to append it here. And whatever, uh, whatever the remainder we came up, that is the bit that we are looking for. Okay, so yes, I found the way. Okay, for finding the remainder, I know I can use a modulus operator which will return me a remainder of any divisions, operations. And for quotient, I can either use a dividend mark or divisor or I can use a double floor if you, I am from Python. Okay, so if you are from C++ and Java, you can use divide operator, not a great thing. Great, so we have cracked down all the logic. So. For finding the bits, we crank down. So what all I need? I need firstly a binary digit. So binary digit, yes. So let me convert it first, okay? So binary, so you can see binary, how I can get it? By modulating the given num, by given num modulating by two, you will get your remainder, which is a bit that you are looking for, which is this, okay? And now, what you will do, you need to divide that particular num as well to reduce the decimal whatever we get after dividing it by 2. So yeah, I will reduce it as well. So let's say I reduce it by 2. So yes, whatever I will got, I will do that here. And make sure that each and every variable is initialized with int so that the decimal part would be automatically removed. Okay, and if you are from Python, you can use this flow division. Okay, not a great thing. So yes, this thing will get your binary bit and reduce the thing. So you are done with finding the binary bits. Now, when you got a binary bit at the runtime, at the runtime, what you will do is you will create a sum variable and every time make count or summation of every binary bit that you are finding currently. Okay, so what happened actually is, let me re-erase it and do it for you okay so decimal number is 10 as the question given now okay so this line what it will do it will give me a remainder so 2 times 5 would be 10 and it will give me a remainder of 0 so what i will do the binary currently the binary has 0 so 0 would be appended let's say my sum is also initialized to 0 so 0 has been appended here so 0 plus 0 is nothing 0 so 2 times 4 2 times 2 is 4 and 4 minus 5 minus 4 is 1 so i got 1 binary in the second operation okay in the second operation i got it now my binary is currently 1 so sum plus 1 would be 1 so I am maintaining a sum as well okay so now uh, 2 times 1 is 2 which will give you 0 oh, which will give you 0 so sum plus 0 would be again the binary bit is currently 0 so 1 plus 0 is not so you will get 1 in the last still your num is not 0 so you will append it here and your sum will become 
to yes so this is the logic behind it and until when you need to operate or you need to do these three tasks until unless your now will not become zero so now should be greater than zero and you are done with your task i hope you got the overall logic how to find the sum of digits because they are not asking us to return the decimal or a binary equivalent of a decimal number if they ask we need to calculate in another manner firstly we need to traverse and find the binary equivalent of decimal number then we need to find the sum of digits so they directly ask us to find the sum okay so now as we can see the python code so python c++ java code you can find in the github the github link is the description just head over to that there is a repo created with this uh question name and you will find three of the languages there so def cov binary sum n okay so while i initialized my sum in the beginning now while n until unless my num is greater than zero i need to do this task again and again so again counting the binary which will give me the remainder that i'm looking for which is a bit and as i got the bit i will add up into my sum so that i can make count of every bit okay and as well as i am reducing it by 2 so that my while loop will continue move and in the last i will return the sum and you are done with your program we are just calling it just printing it as per the portions required so the time complexity and the space complexity of this code would be o of log n because i am directly reducing my decimal number by 2 by 2 by 2 which is log base to n and the space complexity would be constant i am not considering any auxiliary space to solve this problem which is pretty easy problem you can similarly look to the c++, c++ program as well where in sum has been initialized doing the same thing while finding out the binary then accumulating into the sum variable and reducing it by n by 2 where the time complexity remains same return the sum calling up the function and returning it as per the questions similarly applied in the java as well similarly no other change you can find this code in the github as well and tc and sc will remain same for three of the approaches now Shandip, Shubham, Adesh, Varun and much more students were qualified in SNCR, Cognizant and uh, TCS and QT prime digital roles without getting demoted in digital. So I would say if you want to be a part of this list, you just need to take one to one mock session as these people took and they got full one hour of uh, technical sessions and HR session as well. If after that, you will get your resume review, personalized feedback in which I will let you know about your resume, a false part and whatever you need to improve wherever you're lagging in your mock session, what are your weak zone, what is your strength zone, how you need to take a path of a good way, how to crack that particular interview opportunity, everything I will let you know and expert guidance as well. So you just need to head over to www.primecoding.in. There is a card that you can find and just reach out to us now. Write a Python program that reads an integer from user input, removes any duplicate values. Okay and then output the second largest and second smallest unique integer okay so this is the question which were asked recently as well in the august so i would say this is a repeated question and you can find the same question guys same question in my essential sd sheet or essential sheet i would say associate engineer sheet that there i asked you to find the smallest or the smallest uh, second smallest and second largest element as well so now how you can solve it now again in this question you i do you think you need to remove duplicates or do that impact our array i don't think so okay and for finding it you can either sort your array it's not an issue but i will let you know the optimal approach you can sort your array it's not a problem then just return from the back or from the first that the smallest and the second element not a big thing but here i will let you know the optimal approach of it so how you can do it that pretty approach so yes you have three one two three four one now from the visual effect i can tell you the minimum or the second smallest because smallest is one the second smallest would be two and the largest largest is four and the second largest would be three okay so if any time i found again that I three is repeated twice so if i found three again my largest would not change my second largest would not change so there is not issue of removing any duplicate they are just letting you to write more codes which will burn more time so try to be more respective with your time okay and i would say in this particular approach as well people were not able to solve it because people are just converting they are converting the binary first then they are passing to the another function and getting the sum out which is the right approach but it takes 
lot of time to code and if you find errors in that then you will mess up because exam pressure is something else so now please try to read the question first and see how much you can optimize that question as per your need okay so what i will do here is let's say i will take example of largest okay finding a largest and second largest element because the logic remains same you just need to change the signs and you are good to go i will tell you in the code as well so what i will do i will find the largest of this element okay so what happened here is see in finding the largest code whatever you know i guess you might know how to find the largest element present in the array now same code i will just do some tweaks into that code and it will return you the second largest as well so see i will find the largest element now for finding largest element i will initialize my largest to a big in minus infinite number okay now what happened here is i will see three first so i know three is greater than minus infinite so it will be changed here great so now three now i saw one here so one is less than three yeah it is less than three okay so what i need to do i don't need to do anything now four two now two is less than three yes two is less than three so there is no need because i am countering the largest element so three again do it make changes nothing it will not happen anything if you found a duplicate value as well so now you will get four so yes four now four is greater than three okay so you need to make count of the largest element but what i will do is i will create a second largest variable here as well on the runtime which will preserve the current largest element before initialize reinitializing it okay so currently i found out four and i need to reinitialize my largest but before reinitialize it i will pass it the number whatever stored by largest to second largest then then i will reinitialize it to four okay now see in the runtime, I stored the second largest because if four is the largest, the previous would be definitely the second largest that I stored here. Now one do make sense, nothing. But this will happen in just one if statement. But another if statement should also be there, such like in this cases one and two. Okay, what will happen here is we need to take count of everything. Like if we found that my num is greater than second largest, okay, is greater than second largest, and we need to make sure that whatever num that we are currently on is less than largest or not equal to largest or something else that you want to write. Okay, so this is the particular logic. guys. It is a very easy logic. You need to just change in your first if statement and another is if statement would be this. Then you can easily reinitialize your second largest to the current num. Okay, so this is the two case that you need to write in your for loop and you are done with the code. Now, I will tell you the exact code that how it will look. So let's see then get the second largest thing. Okay, so if len is less than two, this is a base case or I would say a boundary case that you need to take care because it might be the array size is less than two. Then there is no use of finding the second largest. Okay, so I am dealing with the very first point. Now, largest has been initialized as well as the second largest is also initialized with the minus infinity value. Okay, now what happened here is, now see, I'm iterating over my nums, is it? So if I found, if I found that my num is greater than largest, just reinitialize my num, but before that, but before that, please store the current value of largest that we, I did it here. So that if sometime this statement, this if statement true, then definitely we need to store the second largest as well. So I stored here in the runtime. And another case that I discussed with you is, if this is not the case, if my if statement doesn't go inside, let's say if it is sorted but in the descending order, let's say 4, 3, 2, 1 and 5 and something else. So this statement won't be executed. So you need to check it again. Do my num is greater than s largest because it can be the case that you will find a second largest from this if statement. Yes, if it is greater than that and we need to know that then particular num should always be less than the largest which will not hit. I will make sure that it will not hit because this case is there. Okay, but still, I read, wrote it for my well-being. Now, S largest has been stored and in the last, I will return the second largest. Very easy code. It's not a big code, okay? And it's not a complex code. If you didn't understand, you can take pen paper and write or dry run it, okay? You will get this code. Now, second smallest and second largest. What is the difference, guys? There is nothing. There is no difference. Like smallest and second smallest has been initialized with the large 
positive integer here i initialize with the negative integer and the same for loop i wrote the same thing just of greater than i make it less than and the whatever we have greater than i make it less than, okay so here i just use num should not equivalent to smallest it is totally on you okay so now second smallest is also being stored and the runtime the second smallest also being initialized here so now returning the second smallest and this is your whole code when take the time complexity of o of n because every function has been called after the first function has been executed okay so and space complexity will be o of n because i'm not storing any other auxiliary space here as you can see okay so as this array has been demanded by the question will not consider it as the space complexity so yes i did it and you don't need to write this statement is just for your if you want to run this program you will get an intuitive output okay so yeah this is the particular code of second largest and largest and the c plus plus code also looks very same second smallest you can see i found it wrote the base case small small and the second smallest has been initialized with the large integer value similarly running a for loop then array of i is less than small then you need to do some operation and if this case hits you need to reinitialize your second largest and return that respectively and simply we are doing the same thing with the second largest as well where the time complexity and space complexity remains same as you can see here we are passing it and this is a particular format you can find the length of the array as well so calling it and printing it in an intuitive manner you don't need to mention the comments inside it okay similarly applies to the java code no significant difference uh, second smallest and the second largest code and there is a main driver code okay so some time complexity remains same so if you want to refer your tcs prepare for tcs nqt prepare for essential or you want a coding sheet which is like you can see in the essential as well whatever question that we gather in a sheet that similar question is popping into their online assessment and it will apply same to capgemini cognizant tcs and qt i launched every sheet on my channel you just need to head over to it you can find the sheet links and see every sheet link is uploaded on my telegram group there's a rose bot will welcome you if you are new join into a telegram group and you will get a trial link you can just head over to that you will find every company folder is there and you just need to head over to any of the company that you are looking for to crack you will find the coding sheet there so thanks for watching this video if you are watching till now please do so, uh, please do consider like this video subscribe this channel if you have not and share with your friends so that they can also prepare for their online assessment and crack essential and make their career well so we'll meet you with a new video soon